Balenciaga just wiped their Instagram page. Okay, if this were just nothing, don't you think Balenciaga would just sort of move on? Oh, no big deal. No. They wiped their Instagram page. They've issued a major apology. That's now the only thing that's featured on their Instagram page. And here's what they say. The first campaign, the gift collection campaign, featured children with plush bear bags dressed in what some have labeled BDSM-inspired outfits. Just put a pause there. It's not what some have labeled BDSM outfits. It's, it's BDSM outfits. I don't know how else you would describe it. Would you say they're dressed up like cowboys? No. Are they dressed up like bikers? No. They're wearing like weird leather chain stuff, but it's clearly a weird sex thing. Our plush bear bags in the gift collection should not have been featured with children. This was a wrong choice by Balenciaga. Combined with our failure in assessing and validating the images, the responsibility for this lies with Balenciaga alone. Okay, so they are saying, they're, they're trying to weasel out of it a little in the beginning. Some have called it a BDSM thing. But then they're saying, look, this was horrible. This was terrible. This shouldn't have featured kids. We shouldn't have let this go through. We're sorry. It's our fault. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. So I don't want to hear, oh, you, you conservatives are blowing this out of proportion. Balenciaga admits this is a weird, creepy, pornographic, child-featuring, S&M-having, weird sex thing. But then they go on. They say, the second separate campaign for spring 2023, that's the one with the child porn case being featured, which was meant to replicate a business office environment, included a photo with a page in the background from a Supreme Court ruling, United States versus Williams, 2008, which confirms as illegal and not protected by uh, freedom of speech, the promotion of child pornography. All the items included in this shooting were provided by third parties that confirmed in writing that these props were fake office documents. They turned out to be real legal papers, most likely coming from the filming of a television drama. The inclusion of these unapproved documents was the result of reckless negligence for which Balenciaga has filed a complaint. We take full responsibility, accountability for our lack of oversight and control of the documents in the background, and we could have done things differently. Okay. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I always want to give people the benefit of the doubt. I, I strive to cultivate a spirit of charity and always seeing the bright side of things. Sorry, I don't think so. Once it's a fluke, twice it's a coincidence, three things, four things, five things. I don't know. It, it just seems a little bit weird. And we are seeing lots and lots of evidence that Balenciaga and the people around Balenciaga have a weird fascination with weird sex stuff and kids. Okay. I'm just noticing that. I'm just seeing that. And we've got a lot of evidence to back it up. You're telling, oh, Oops, actually, yeah, just as we're getting all this heat for a weird pornographic child featuring campaign, oh, just, oops, coincidentally, the set decorator used these documents. It's probably from a television uh, drama. We're, probably. We're not going to give you any evidence of that, but, you know, let's just say it's that. And it just coincidentally, the, the exact part that's featured there specifically refers to a child porn case. And yes, it's from, they, notice they say, it's from U.S. versus Williams, which was a case that said that the peddling of child porn is not protected speech. But in the, in the line of that document that was featured specifically in the photograph, it referred to a different Supreme Court decision. It was the, the Free Speech Coalition case, which actually found that simulated child pornography is protected speech, which is a ridiculous ruling from the Supreme Court. But the ruling that was referenced there was a pro-child porn case. Balenciaga's argument is, oh, this was all just accidental. Let me tell you something. If you've, I, uh, most people have never spent time around a film set or a photo shoot set. Or anything. Nothing is accidental on a film set, on a photo shoot set, especially when we're talking about a very prestigious, very high-end fashion brand. It's, it's not like you walk up there with a, a, you know, a digital camera and say, okay, click, click, click. Okay, we got our shots. Everything is meticulously set. And when you start pulling on this thread, it gets really, really weird because one of the big stylists for Balenciaga, a woman named Lada Volkova, uh, got a lot of press yesterday, not from the corrupt establishment media, but just from citizen journalists, just from regular old people who were looking into, just poking a little bit into the Balenciaga story. And the stuff they found, well, I'll let you judge for yourself. I don't see any way to read this woman's work as anything less than an obsession 
with sexualizing little kids in the most perverse, egregious, nauseating sort of way. So Lada Volkova was a stylist, a very prominent stylist, worked with Balenciaga for a long time, worked alongside Balenciaga's creative director, Debna Gvazalia, until 2017. And people started looking into some of her other work yesterday. So Balenciaga tries to get ahead of this story. They say, Lada Volkova has not worked with Balenciaga or its team since 2017. She has in no way participated in the brand's recent Instagram or advertising campaigns. That's what a Balenciaga spokesman told Newsweek. Okay, but this woman did work with Balenciaga for a long time. She clearly has had a lot of influence on the company. So Jake Shield, who's a former UFC fighter, just starts looking into her Instagram page. We've blurred out the faces. Obviously, these faces were not blurred out on her Instagram One of the first ones that pops up is this little girl in a kind of really done up sort of hairdo lying on the the ground, lying on her side in a sort of skimpy little leotard and and kind of smiling in a very creepy way, but with a handout that sort of says no. Another one is a child in high heels, topless, in a very strange sort of position, Uh, obviously a, a kind of sexualized way. You can see that from the stiletto heels but not quite showing the face. Another one is a child's bedroom just covered in gore and blood everywhere. Another one is a little teddy bear tied up in a sort of dungeon or jail cell or something like that. There's more. It wasn't just these four photos. Let's see. Yeah. So then there's another one of people tied up in like kind of weird plastic trash bags, all tied up in a weird, it looks very like some kind of torture scene, another one of a little kid holding up a skull, another one of a a little kid being duct taped and tied to a chair, being made to watch something. We're not exactly sure what the kid's being made to watch. Another one of someone with with, uh, entrails pouring out of the, the midsection. And there's more images. So then there's an image on on this Instagram of just a satanic scene of a pentagram with a devil demon looking person up there and then a kind of sacrifice on another pentagram. So now we're talking about overt, overt satanic imagery. And then we're seeing lots and lots of teddy bears throughout this person's campaign. This is is, uh, Lada, Lada Volkova. This woman clearly has a fascination with teddy bears. Now, why does she have a fascination with teddy bears? Well, maybe it's just totally innocent because teddy bears are really cute and fun and plushy. Everyone had a teddy bear as a kid. Fewer people have teddy bears as adults. But it's her kind of lying around with teddy bears, walking around with teddy bears. And then there's one of a teddy bear doing a, a sexual act that's really, really weird. So all of this, I'm not sitting here telling you that uh, this woman is some kind of witch, you know, controlling the Balenciaga campaign. Not telling you she's not. I mean, there's overt satanic imagery here and weird child sex stuff. But then something that's really, really weird. I'm not the first person to discover this. Someone called my attention to it, and I looked it up, tried it myself. When, and I don't know how to explain this. I'm not making any allegation. I'm just observing this, okay? I'm just noticing. You type into Google Translate Latin to English. So Latin, the universal language, right? It's supposed to be the main language of the world. It's the language that when I attend mass, that's the language that it's in. But it's the language that was the universal language until very, very recently. You type in ba from Latin into English, you get nothing. It just says ba, ba, because ba is not a Latin word. Then you type in a second word, len, Ba len. What's the English rendering? Ba len, because len is not a uh, Latin word either. Ba len si. Ba len si. Again, you just get ba len si because there's n- no Latin translation of that because those are not Latin words. But here's where it gets really weird. You type in ba len si aga. And then the English translation is do what you want. I'm not making any accusation. I'm not even speculating. I just don't. Do what you want. The thing that's really weird about that is do what you want is the commandment of the Satanists. This was the commandment of Aleister Crowley. Do what thou wilt is the entirety of the law. That's what he says. That is, that is the satanic commandment. Going back to the Garden of Eden, do what you want, Eve. Come on, you shall be as gods. Do, do what you want. Now, when you look on Google Translate, it says, would you like to translate this from Hausa, which is some African language? But it's not translating it from Hausa. That's not what it means in Hausa. When you click the translator from Hausa, it gives you a different translation. 
I, I have no way of making any sense of this other than to observe that there's something weird about Balenciaga. And we know it's not just a coincidence, and we know it's not just the Republican reaction, the, the, the pouncing. Because Balenciaga is taking this very seriously. Balenciaga is wiping their Instagram page, apologizing immediately for the campaign, taking legal action against the people who are creating the campaign. And then you look into it, and it's, it's just all this overtly satanic imagery. You can't write off this stuff as a crazy conspiracy theory. You certainly can't in a world post-Jeffrey Epstein, okay? Because post-Jeffrey Epstein, we know that there actually is an elite cabal of pedophiles who, who have a whole island who would go to the island and do weird sex stuff with kids. That You can't just say, well, you crazy tinfoil hat conspiracy theorists. We know that happened. There are court documents about it. And yet we still don't really know who the clients are. We still don't have the little black book. No one's really been held accountable for it. Jeffrey Epstein got Jeffrey Epstein. Ghislaine Maxwell is getting some sort of sweetheart deal. But what about the clients? And why, why does it always seem to come down to weird satanic stuff? You notice this? Now, you might say, well, this, this uh, designer woman for Balenciaga, she's just ironically worshiping the devil and putting up all this imagery. The, the fact that Google Translate, I, I assume someone just went in and kind of tinkered with it as a kind of weird joke. I don't know how else to make sense of that translation to, and to make it the satanic commandment. That's, maybe it's just a kind of a weird, ironic joke or so. I don't, but the thing is you can't worship the devil ironically. You can't do anything ironically for too long. If you, do, if, if, you, if you behave in an ironic way for your whole life, then it's just sincere. Then it's just earnest. That's just what you have done. And when you worship Satan ironically, when you just sort of do what you want, as a lot of the Satanists say, they say, we don't really believe in the devil. We just do what we want. Right. That, that is worshiping the devil. That is it. it, it it's that line from, I think it was Baudelaire, who says, the finest trick of the devil is to convince you that he does not exist. 